I'm Spider-Man, Uncle Ben. I'm... I'm just tired. <laughs> Follow it's the whole shiver down your spine. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> Sorry if my voice is sore, but... <laughs> With that said, this is Sibling Rivalry. I know how it feels to live in a world without power, without mercy, without Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man is back, and he's fighting Electro, the Green Goblin, the Rhino, sometimes Gwen Stacy um, and staying in a relationship, uh, Gwen Stacy's dad sometimes, pretty much fighting every herpes, I think he's fighting herpes Yeah, I think that was well. another subplot, so like, he's pretty much fighting everybody. Osteoporosis, <laughs> he might be fighting that. <laughs> in the latest Amazing Spider-Man 2, and... On the surface, that doesn't sound like too complicated a story, but you'd be good amazed. fucking god. <laughs> yes, it lives up to its title of being quite amazing and how much goddamn stuff happens in this film. I <coughs> uh, can't go into too much detail, because in a way we did kind of give it away. He's just going up against all these people. A lot of them start off. This is good. a movie entirely comprised of spoilers. Yeah. It's it, really hard to review. We, yeah, we thought without. like Captain America 2 was going to be like hard to talk about without the spoilers. Oh it's like God. this one just friggin', you know, every. Okay, so he's fighting these villains. He's in an on again, off again relationship with uh, uh, Gwen Stacy. Uh, and you're finding out all these backstories. He's, he's in an on again, off again relationship with Electro. For yeah, <laughs> he's he's trying to figure out what happened to his parents as well, while trying to keep his identity a secret and trying to be funny, but also trying to balance the drama. So much is going on in this movie. Uh, I looked on Rotten Tomatoes, not getting very good reviews. It's like 57% I didn't, I didn't really like read that. many reviews. And to this. Uh, watching this, I wanted to see it fresh. <laughs> watching this movie. The whole time I'm watching this film, I'm, I'm saying to myself, Wow, that's amazing, that's wonderful, just as good as the last one. And then other times I watch it going, Wow, that's ridiculous, that's really stupid. Do you have to always yeah. explain something all the time? And it just kept going back and forth between these two. And by the time it was done, I, I sort of looked at you and I said, I think I like it. <laughs> I... I think I kind of like it. I don't know. I, it's I, so much stuff. The the biggest it's just a movie of just stuff. The the biggest problem with it that I'm sure other critics are saying too is that it's trying to throw way too much at you. I mean, we always talk about Christopher Nolan dialogue being exposition, exposition, exposition. Th this is like every scene, every line is explaining something or foreshadowing or foreshadowing. Um. If you know the comics, you can figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, but that's another problem, in my opinion, is that if you don't know the comics, you're going to be going into this like, why are they throwing all these things at me? Yeah, I'm just here weird... to see a simple story, and you're throwing all this crap at you, and as a movie, I see it very much as the early X-Men films, where it's like, is it technically good? Probably not. But... For what you're most likely looking for, it's totally serviceable. It's giving you Spider-Man doing his cool things. It's uh, it's the got the cool films had a more cohesive plot, but I may not actually, much. I may actually like this better than the X-Men. It's so weird. Some parts it's work so to, well. It, yeah, it, the the parts that work well work really really well, and then there are parts where you're just like, am I in the same movie? There, you know what we when we saw the credits, it was something like six writers, and oh we both my looked at God, and went, yeah. that explains a lot of it. And not only was it like six writers, I'm pretty sure if I got my facts straight, that a couple of them were some Abrams uh, alumni. It was like the Star Trek and Star Trek Into Darkness guys. It, and is, that just seems to make so much sense, because so much of this movie feels like half of it is, like, nothing but fanboy service that's done well enough, and it seems like it's going to build to something, and just like Star Trek Into Darkness, it just implodes in the climax. And is it me, or does... You look at these writers, and it's like, I get the feeling most of these are competent writers, but then I just feel like there's just one jackass who's like, 
Hey, Electro should play the It's a Bitsy Spider off of these rigs as he flings Spider-Man on them. Hey, he should make those rigs go up and down yeah, like I sound didn't bars. That at all. And I didn't get that at all. I mean, no, like that's uh, what he's doing. Is play, yeah, he's no, no, no. I mean, I, I know that's what he's doing. I'm just saying I didn't get that at yeah, all. Yeah, it's like, what was up. Or, with or that? when like Electro when he sees Electro for the first time and he's just like, you know, hey, I need you, man. You need me? Yeah, yeah, I need you, man. And it's like, did I really just see something so stupid? But then it'll come back. When you see Garfield interacting with uh, Emma Stone, and they have... The actor, not the uh, cat. Yes. <laughs> they have not only amazing chemistry, but I was telling them at the end of the movie, uh, this is the first superhero film. I actually like the romance more than the action. I do, too. Uh, it's totally believable. Well, it's a testament to the fact that, I'm sorry, if there are Mary Jane fans out there... In the original comics, I liked Gwen Stacy better. Well, I, So, I always thought she was a better character to begin with, and... There are things in the Raimi films I really like. I'm not, they're, they're, it seems like we get these two cams out. Oh, I hate the reboot. Oh, I love the Raimi films. Or I hate the Raimi films. Or, I love the reboot. I'm very much of the opinion that the, the Raimi films had their, their pros and cons and there were things I liked. Thing I didn't like, I, the Mary Jane and what they did with her character. I mean, th there was no evolution. I mean, if, if you really want to sum up my biggest problem with the Raimi Spider-Man films, watch the Honest Trailers. They nailed oh, yeah. it. I've been saying this for years. They simply made the same movie three times. And Mary Jane's character bore the worst brunt of it. And Kirsten Dunst just was done. She's just like, I'm not gonna... I'm, she was saying after three, she's like, I, no matter what, I quit. Because all that happens is... It's the same on again, off again thing, and then I'm just caught by some baddie, yeah, and then Spider-Man saves me. I, I cry. Scream a lot. Yeah, yeah, then he cries. Yeah, so total, absolute waste of a character. It, it was a, it was criminal. It was a sin. And and in this one, it's the exact opposite. When she Stacey's joins him, such on an amazing stuff. character. You know, yeah. and they're working out a plan together. Like she comes in, and it's not like you know, you know, she's like looking around. What's going on? Eee! or something she's like okay if we go over here i can go up here and you can oh you mean the molecular surgery? yeah, yeah. you made that okay so I mean, we can i mean the work is modernized i i don't remember quite being as insanely smart in the comments uh, i mean she's she's basically sometimes i swear she's just like way more smarter than peter who's supposed to be the the whiz kid who invented uh, all the little web slinging devices and super genius so I don't remember, it's been a while since I've read, like, you know, out of the collections and the omnibus and stuff. I don't remember him being that insanely smart, but I'm like, as a modern update, I'm actually really cool with it, and it's a lot of fun that, you know, she's got a brain and is able to do it, and that's twice in a row they've done that. Well, so. and even even in movies where it's like, the, the love interest, you know, is smart or whatever, it's like, they'll sort of do their thing and then just... Would go off to a corner or get captured. Or I believe it though. She's the yeah, valedictorian yeah, no, no. of I, no, the school. I, yeah, I like yeah. that they're constantly. Not only do they work together, but they work well together. I like yeah, seeing these two work off of each other. Chemistry. That, and it's weird because there's this great superhero romance that gets interrupted by other. Yeah, things. and it's so bizarre. I've never been in a movie, a I superhero know. movie, where Every I'm like, no, go back to the romance. Interrupted. I'm like, I don't care. Oh no, yeah, it's I like, don't need on, to see to Electro, Doctor Manhattan. Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> well, like, he was like a combination of three separate things. Okay, and I get it. I remember the original Electro outfit. It's kind of silly. <laughs> so it's like green and yellow, and yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it looks like something out of Darkwing Duck. Um, so I, I get it, but like this version of Electro, he's played great by Jamie Foxx, but just. There's just a blandness to the design. I'm just like, oh, so you just took Dr. Manhattan and, and combined it with, like, the Emperor from Star You know, the, the, the veins are cool. When he has a little hoodie over his head, that's kind of cool. You know, yeah, but then, just, okay, just there's, a part, not, yeah. there's a part where, and they're, they're advertising this in the trailer so we can talk about it. The Sinister Six is being built up. Um, Rhino, by the way, is just the beginning and the ending, nothing else. Oh, um, and the, that's the sad part is Paul Giamatti is so great in that Throw, it's a yeah. throwaway You just it's like, oh, I'm in this for three seconds? Okay, because I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. Okay? I'm crazy! I'm crazy. Oh, I'm so so rawr, rawr. And he is like a fucking pirate in this. Yeah, uh, like, and, but he just comes and goes randomly. In a, yeah, he's in a obviously going to be built up for the next Rhinoceros Transformers suit yeah. for some uh, But no, what I, I was get getting to either. is that when, because again, this is one of the few, it's still a comic book movie, but it's like, it's trying to be... I hate using the word more adult, um, but it's one of those things where it's like a lot of this 
a lot of the stuff in the Raimi Spider-Man wouldn't fly in the Spider-Man, it'd be too silly, but, like, when he comes up in that suit, the Electro suit, and he has the little lightning bolt on the side, I lost my shit. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> There's just random moments. There's so many random moments where I'm just like, seriously? Like, yeah, we went like you from, can't believe We that. went from Aunt May to having, like, and that's the thing, I actually like... I, I know, she's not classic Aunt May. She's not old with white hair, she's not Rose, or, uh, Rosemary Harris, uh, or whoever, but I actually think Sally Field's Aunt May is really good. I think it is, has yeah. this, like, Academy Award-winning scene in the middle of this frickin' comic about book being, movie. About being his, uh, Yeah, about wife. being his aunt and, and yeah. how his real parents scene. just <clears throat> took off and left, and, and then I just remember we cut to something else and it's kind of goofy, and I'm just like, what? What's going on here? Like, yeah, I mean... There's just too much shit going on. You know, and, and that happened in the original Raimi films, too, which I always sort of say, yeah, that was a problem also. You know, yeah, but, but... But there was but less... It celebrated more in the yeah, Raimi the was less This was trying stuff. to be more serious. Yeah, there's just such an overload of plot. Like, and that's what kills me is... Because that's not a problem with the Raimi films. The Raimi films, at least, as much as I do dislike David kept in his script. The stories are very simple. Yeah, it's the stories are very, very simple. Flowing. They're very bland, but it had a three-act structure. It was a fully constructed narrative. Except for the third one. The third one throws well, the third in one's a piece stuff, of shit, yeah. which this guy dragged me to and tried to tell me was seen the it best anyway. out of all the, the Spider-Mans. Out like of all the these X-Men movies where you dragged me to X3 and said the same out thing. Out of all these stupid-ass movies, yes, every time I saw uh, Spider-Man 3, people always gasp at these three scenes, and I'm just like, no Nobody gasp at the other Spider-Man movies. Please send all of your complaints care of Doug Walker. No, okay, <laughs> but again, they're, they're stupid movies. They're all dumb. I love them, but they're all dumb. I mean, it's, for me, this is I like disagree. the reboot where Two's it's like... pretty solid. I, oh, come on. You were talking about a scene taking it seriously. How about when, you know, Aunt May has that, again, a great scene with Aunt May, and, you know, he tries to touch her hand, she pulls away and walks up. Cut to the octopus man putting his giant sun machine together and saying, Now, let me get the uranium, blah, blah, blah. It's just as silly, the contrast. Remember that in two? That's most comic book movies, though. And we're going on a scale of all five films now. I, I think it's jarring. I, I, I thought the first... The uh, first reboot, The Amazing Spider-Man, I thought balanced it much better. Uh, just, just to recap, Spider-Man 3, best of the series. No, actually, I do think 2 is the best. No, I uh -huh. do think 2 is That's not what you said back then. And X-Men 3, good solid film. I didn't say good solid film, I said I liked it. There's a big difference between being a good film and like it. Again, there's no good X-Men films. Dragged me to it. There's no good X-Men films, but I like them. So we firmly established that you are not the right person to talk to about comic book movies. Okay, no, I'm going to talk about this movie because I know very little about Spider-Man. And believe it or not, that actually is a good thing, because I can talk about it just as a film. Because, again, with the X-Men films, I read X-Men, I like them, so going You do in, have the advantage. I I've read Spider-Man. Spider-Man was my guy like X-Men. Yeah, was yeah, now, now you know Spider-Man So there are things well. that bug me because I read the comics, I'm like, shit! But, but there's also stuff you know you're waiting to see and can't wait to get to, and stuff that... Like, we'll talk about in the spoiler corner. Uh, they botched. Kind of, well, exactly, but for other viewers, it could be like, oh, wow, that was, like, really good. Uh, and we'll get to that in spoiler corner. Um, but, yeah, so that is something I would say. If, you, if you're going in just for an action film, you might like it okay, but if you're, if you're not familiar with the comics, which it's unlikely you would be if you're going to go see The Amazing Spider-Man 2, if you're but, unfamiliar with the comics, I think you just might get lost. Yeah, that's what I mean, I'm one saying. One of the reasons you I think I followed it well confused. enough is because I did read the comics, which is the one problem with the film is if you've read the comics, then you'll notice the changes, and I think in some cases be kind of pissed off. <laughs> if you haven't read the comics, I think you'll just kind of be lost because it was made for people who have knowledge of the comics. So it's really strange. I'm not sure who this movie's aimed for. It's it, what I get and the yet, feeling. And yet, I still kind of like it. I don't. Well, care. I, I get the bit. Well, here's two things that I think uh, after seeing it. One is that uh, what probably happened is that studios, producers, whatever, comic book movies are big. Comic book movies are huge. So we have to make a lot of them. Uh, what's a big thing in the Spider-Man movie? The big villains, the Sinister Six. Okay, well we already have well, one villain yeah. in each movie. We gotta throw in all the Sinister no, Six, so we're gonna have it. two this here, so three neat. here, four here, and this it's trying to squeeze so too much. Doing this. And I will say this, because I th there was like maybe one or two reviews altogether that I read before I went into it. I avoided almost everything. I didn't notice what the Rotten Tomatoes percentage uh -huh. was, because I was like, I want to go in pretty fresh, but 
there was um, a couple reviews I read, and one of them, like, that one was positive and one was negative, and the negative one was like, oh, Mark Webb, I just, this guy just sucks, and he's not... I, uh, I couldn't have a more opposite approach. I think this is a really, for what this guy got handed, in the script and what can only be the most bizarre directions from the studio because remember yeah. as much as we complain about the Raimi films one and two are pretty solid compared to three and Sony fucked up three they messed up that film they, they, they threw two they threw in charge yeah. with Vanna so I and, think Mark yeah. Webb directed this as competently as anybody could and I don't think it's entirely his fault I think he is saddled with a script by 20 different people with all sorts of issues from the studio saying we need to have this, this, and this. We, we, we need to connect yeah. with the fans, but we need to connect with people who don't know it either. But we need to have this many villains, but we also need them to follow it, okay? It's like, yeah. Oh, oh, and, and, and can you put that, that guy in the, in the weird hat in the shadows that we had in the first one? And then, and, and, it just, yeah, it's... I mean, it's, yeah. it's way too much, I mean, to, to say at least. Yeah, but it's, so, a, it's a lot of excess. So but I, he... I just want to say this. It's a very, very pretty movie, and it's actually shot, for the most part, there's some shaky cam, but at this point I've just come to accept that nobody knows how to make an action film anymore. It's the Bourne Identity and, and Michael Bay and all of those movies. It's mostly just, just in filming. the opening. Yeah, but it's mostly in the opening, and the stuff with Spider-Man in it is really well constructed. When he's and flying around the city, it's but there's a yeah. shot, I just call it the crotch cam, because it's like it's ass crotch, but it's looking up. But by God, you just feel like you're flying yeah, it with It is him the best special in effects shot. in any Spider-Man film, the best use of the web slinging in any Spider-Man film. When it was just doing that, it was really, really good. And the one thing, and this is something I really appreciated about the first one, and the Raimi films to some extent, that a number of people don't get, <laughs> man, or, uh, man of Steel. It's colorful. Mm. It really looks and feels like a comic book. The colors are bright and vibrant. They just pop out, and everything you're looking at has a real wow factor. Whereas, like nowadays, like the the modern style seems to be like, like super dark. Hey, can we gritty. suck as much color out of this one as possible? Because we're dark, and gritty, gritty, yeah. gritty is real. That makes us more adult. Realistic, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, well, actually, I thought this film was way more adult than anything in, like, you know, Man of Steel. Well, no, but people confuse the yeah. dark and gritty for Yeah, adults. it's like dark and gritty yeah. does not necessarily... No, smart really is adult. adult. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that I think, what held the movie together for me, what made me coming out of that saying, no, I like this, I'm glad I saw it, I, I could even possibly see it again. Uh, honestly, it it's the two leads. It's Andrew Garfield yeah. and it's Emma Stone, and they are wonderful. Uh, such chemistry. And such chemistry, and they are fine on their own. I, I don't need one... Scenes where they're both indi together. individually paired. Like, when she's researching things in Oscorp and getting into trouble, and, you know, he's... Uh, scenes where they're separate, they really work. Like, and, and... Again, that's the one thing where I think the Raimi film dropped the ball. It's like, she is the anti-Mary Jane. She's interesting to watch. She's fun to watch. There only was one really fan servicey moment, and that's when, okay, so we saw this with both our wives. So my wife oh, they both and his wife look. Yeah. <laughs> both looked at each other and whispered something, and it's when she's interviewing to go to Oxford. <laughs> and, like, I had, the funny thing is, like, I'm so tired. It's been a long day. Like, I've had a bunch of meetings today, so I'm, like, trying to stay awake. And, and like, they whispered something. I'm like, what did you whisper? And my wife says, she's like, what girl interviews for Oxford and wears a skirt that basically just is nothing but her ass? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, a girl who really wants to get into Oxford. Yeah. I was like, a girl who's gonna sleep with the admissions guy. I think I said afterwards, I said, She's going to Oxford. Sure enough, gets the phone call, I'm going to Oxford. Yeah. So, I mean, that, uh, you know, I, I agree with our respective wives. That was a low blow fan service moment. But okay, the sad part is, to... I'm the target audience for that. I didn't even catch it. Okay, compared it. to, like, it to darkness with like the underwear scene. Oh, like, I mean, no, it, I think hell, it's comic bad. comic books in general, it's not that bad. Um, but um, but no, I whenever I watch, I mean, you were talking about Mary Jane in the Raimi films. I'll talk about Tobey Maguire. I just don't think he's as good as Garfield. I, this kid, I'm into his dilemma. I'm into okay. what's going on. He is charming. He is funny. He is interesting. I want to know everything going on with him. I believe every emotion. He is in the moment, and I love it. But here's the issue with Maguire, and this is the issue I had with the first amazing Spider-Man film with this reboot. McGuire worked as Nerdy Parker. He worked as High School Parker. 
I'm sorry, but the first, like, ten minutes of this film, I laughed my ass off because Spider-Man saves the day! And, and um, Gwen Stacy is sitting there and she's like, Oh, where are you? And, and this and that. And when it's all said and done, it turns out it's their high school graduation. I like, I literally burst out laughing because I'm like, he looks like he's 30. Yeah. And she looks like she's in her mid-20s at least. They feel like she'd be graduating college. Yeah, so. like, and it, it does make me realize, like, what would be the tragedy of portraying college-age Parker or starting off the story mm -hmm. and doing Flash? Because, like, I'm sorry, I can't suspend my disbelief. I just don't believe it. And it does bother me because I don't believe Garfield was ever a geek. I mean, he may have been a geek in real life, but the, the way the character is played in the movie, I don't see a geek in him. I don't see someone who is ostracized. I don't I don't even see nerdy as much. No, you know, I, I'll think a like, little... Like, McGuire actually had that. Now, McGuire never matured in the series, and that's where the Raimi series fails miserably. They never mature. He should become Garfield. Through. Start off McGuire, turn yeah. into Garfield. It needs to start off was. with McGuire in flashbacks and become Garfield. But to me, that's like saying, well, we have Clark Kent the whole time, but we never get Superman. It's like, no, I want fucking Superman. And to hear yeah, it's like, we no, get Spider-Man. That's Spider -Man. the thing, though. Spider-Man was both characters. That's mm -hmm. what made the comic really cool, is he started off as a nerdy character, and they aged him over the years. So he becomes more, I'm not going to say hip, but he becomes more normal, grown into himself, college age, Confident, you know. Yeah. He ages and matures, and we never got that out of the Raimi series. I'll, I'll and we started off here with one who's already mature and laughably not in frickin' high school. I'll make a little bit of an argument for sort of the, the nerdy genius route and stuff, in that uh, we've both known people who, you know, we could clarify as like, wow, that person has a brilliant mind, but they are usually fucking insane or something there is okay, something I'll take that's like genius and, i won't take nerdy okay fair enough. enough there's nothing socially he he, no, he, tries, he is a bit socially awkward he, yeah but i don't believe it he tries he's, to play it's like somebody who is naturally no, just he's, pretty he, he's cool eccentric. and sly. He, yeah. he, he's got eccentric. he's eccentric but he's i that's where he's got like as, the mad genius yeah, thing but that's where as, as good as garfield is like that's where it, the act drops for me because i'm like he seems to me like probably in real life a pretty sly, slick, confident guy, and uh, and he's trying to play. I'm socially awkward. I'm gonna do this thing, and I'm like, I, I just don't buy it. I, I think he does that very well in sort of like I said, a mad genius, eccentric way. Like he's just got a million things going on, and now he has to do this now. You know, like a crazy yeah, Steve I think Jobs. Eccentric. I think it just would have been easier if they had just made him more mature to begin with. I, I, I would never like, get. I just don't see high school. I, I agree with him when you say yeah. you would never see ostracized and, like, you know, away from the group or something like that. It's like, no, he'd just be like, well, he's kind of weird, but he's cool. You know, he's the cool kid that can hack into your computer and get you, you know, anything you want. Well, and this yeah. is the tragedy, I think, of all the films. Because, I mean, it's clear to me Sony doesn't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they botched three, and now we have a second film where, as much as we really love certain parts, has the same problems as they're three. They're throwing too much. There's just yeah. too much shit going on, so... When it's all said and done, I'm like, man, if I could take the best parts of the Raimi films. Somewhere there's this brilliant, the best parts of the Mark movie. Webb films, you know, which, by the way, I think that's a made-up name. I think anybody <laughs> you get to dress <laughs> whatever his name is Webb, yeah. It, but if you could take the best, the best of both of them, combine them together, we would have the perfect Spider-Man movie. But we don't, because Sony's just... God, this is where I'm just like, seriously, just sell it to Marvel well, and, and let them handle it. And that's the one other thing we should get to before we wrap up, uh, is that that is kind of a disadvantage, and we said this about the first film too, is that when you know, when you know how close the last films are, and you know, oh, okay, we're gonna reach this point now, or we're gonna do this now, even if you're not familiar with the comics, you just need to know the first films, you know who the Green Goblin is, you know when he's coming, you know what's inevitable, and... It's like, I mean, you they can't just reverse it. it. You I mean, just so you have to do it. Stuff, you, know. you know he's going to be the Green Goblin. Yeah. And yeah, you know all these things are going to happen because this is a reboot. So, yeah, it just... That, that's sort the of one a, thing, there is sort of a redundancy. That, that's the one thing I really do... Not one, actually, many things, you know, but the Christopher Nolan Batman films, I mean, that always amazes me is that even though I like the first Batman, you know, the most, I'm amazed at how, how well it he restarted those stories story. and, and made yeah. it its own and made it unique and made it different and took it from a different angle and did very, very different things. Um, and I'm not saying it's easy. It's very difficult, but it is a disadvantage to these new films. Um... So that's a final thoughts. I there's so many things I really 
you know what it is? I'm just gonna say, I want to love this movie. I want to love it so bad. And there's just so many things, though, that are off about it that I can't love it, but I can't hate it either. It's good-ish. <laughs> it kind of, maybe, sort of, all right-ish. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This film <laughs> confounds me. Confound it all! I love it, though! I know, it's... I really got wrapped up in the action. Spider-Man's a smartass again. Yeah, he, he tells jokes. He's funny. Yeah, because I will, I will say this. One of the reviews I did read um, out of the two was... It was Roper's review, and he's like, Spider-Man's a jerk. And I'm like, did you never read the comics? Yes. <laughs> I'm like, that's the whole point. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's funny whenever it was in the action or the romance. Some of the action and all of the romance, I was really involved. And then it just, there's just so much overload, though. And at the end, it just sort of, much like Star Trek Into Darkness, just implodes on itself like they don't know where to go. For all of the lack of plot in movie one, where we kept complaining, it's like we wanted the movie that, you know, should have been released with all of these, half of these plot points settled. Yeah, they threw in. Yeah, they just they threw it all in. everything into this one. And yet are still setting up, like, more for the third. Mm -hmm. It's just... You know what, just let Marvel handle these things. I think they know how to do this stuff right. <laughs> well, it is technically Marvel, but... Yeah, but like, I mean, the yeah. studio, yeah. Sony, Sony just doesn't get it fully. Um, Better than DC, but... <laughs> I, I'd say that, like I said, very much sort of like my thoughts on the X-Men films. It's Is it technically a good movie? Probably not. But I think there's just enough really, really good things in it enough fan service, enough for a general crowd, uh, to pull you through and to make you glad you saw Did it not make you feel like a kid again, though? Like, particularly some of those scenes, like... When he's flying around! Yeah. yeah. No, and, and like I said, this is... Yeah, it really I did, want and to that's be... why I want to, like, I want to love it, and then I just pull back a little, like... Ugh. But again, the adult to me is like, no! But again, I give this to Garfield's credit, I want to be this Spider-Man. I never I want to too. be... I never want no, to I be the too. McGuire Spider-Man. You know, no, because oh, he just, it just he's just a nerd that puts on a costume yeah. and goes, oh, dude. You Seems know, it's like, like Garfield is cool, Gar but he's also tortured, and he's interesting, and he's yeah. smart, and he works his way with it, and, no, yeah, totally so, agree. um, yeah, with, uh, with that said, I'm still Spider-Man. And I'm just still so confused, but I kind of, sort of, maybe liked it a, a bit-ish. <laughs> that makes me want to cry! <gasps> I'm here, Uncle Ben! <laughs> Oh, no, the sexy cry. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> Don't break up with me again. God, I just want Uncle Ben to smack the shit out of you. Oh!